Check out this awesome loop video I made the other day. And I'm gonna show you how to make another one just like that right now. Check out this awesome loop video I made the other day. Just kidding, you don't have to watch all the way through it. But I wanna show you today how I made that one for TikTok and Reels the other day that's super fun, has a really seamless look to it, and people just seem to love it. So they ate it up on all my social media platforms, and I felt like it was worth teaching. So I wanna get right into it, and there's a few platforms you can make this one in, and I'll tell you which ones you can use, and then we're gonna use DaVinci Resolve today, but the concept should roll over to Power Director on your phone or CapCut on your phone, but DaVinci Resolve is by far the f best free editor that gives you like the most professional stuff all around. And if you have a computer, use DaVinci Resolve and just use the free version because it'll get you by for a very long time before you ever have to upgrade. So we'll go ahead and hop into DaVinci Resolve and make this. But I want to tell you the thing I did at the beginning of this that made it really easy to just loop that. And it comes in handy on a lot of stuff. And we used it on that TikTok slash Reels one that I showed you there too. So the best thing to do is to have your starting lines or your beginning filmed at the end. And that works out for me when I do the loop videos very much. Um, and I think it's probably the best way to do it. So if you do your conclusion and then your start in that order, but do it in one take, that's your best way to create that cut where you cut it on a spot that you know will show up at the very beginning. Therefore, when you're playing it on Reels and TikToks and stuff like that, it's just going to keep playing and it's going to seem like nothing stopped it because you'll say you're finishing and then it'll say the beginning. And then people will tend to watch those a lot more than they would watch a video that you don't do as a loop. So loops are very handy for making views happen and getting those TikToks and Reels to just boost because before people know that they're watching it multiple times, they've watched it at least a time and a half, two times, and then you're above 100% watch time. All right, so let's get right into it. All right, guys, we're in DaVinci Resolve, and we are on our edit page. So today we're going to use the edit page, which is this one down here, and we're going to use the color page, and then at the end we can go ahead and deliver it over on our delivery page. But so on the edit page, we have our clip in the timeline, and you're going to want to make your timeline match. So if it doesn't already match a vertical um, aspect ratio, you'll go down to the sprocket in the bottom corner, click it, and select Use Vertical Resolution, and then it'll change it to Vertical Resolution. We're already there, though. So I can click my clip and get it up into the uh, viewer here. So we're in the viewer. And then you can, by using I and O, you can start an in point and an out point on your clip. So I've already done it here. So I've got my in point where I want my clip to start, and then I'm not even putting an out point. We're just gonna play it till the end. So I can click and drag my clip down there. And if I don't want the audio, I can hit Alt, then click and drag down. It'll just bring the clip, because I don't really need the audio for this. So we're gonna go ahead and just play it to where I want my cut. This is where I want my beginning to start and my end to happen. So right here, I want to do it right before my expression changes. And this is just a personal choice on my account here. So right before my expression changes from a smile to not happy is when I'm doing it. So I'm going to go B to create my cut. And B just selects the knife tool here, the slicer. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut it there. And let's just clarify, here's how I shot this. So shooting this in this order, I had the hat in my hand and I flung it out as fast as I could to where I felt like my throw was going to be. Then I did my action walking towards the camera, blah, 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 and through the hat. And my expression idea here was that I was trying to get rid of this hat and I just can't. Like it's just that hat that, you know, your wife hates and you try to get rid of it, but you just can't help but put it on all the time. So that was kind of my little scheme with this. All right, so anyways, so then you throw the hat and it took a few tries, so good luck. <laughs> so our next step is to bring, first we wanna select our pointer so we don't keep slicing it. 
um, bring the first clip up, bring the last clip to the beginning, and then we're gonna slide the, the top clip over. Now what we wanna do with the top clip is lower the opacity some. So we're going up to the inspector and over on the right, the inspector is, we're gonna lower the opacity and, and wherever feels like you can still see through it but see what's going on in both clips. And if your inspector's not showing, just click this button up in the top corner, it'll show your inspector. Now we're gonna drag our clip over. We're gonna find where the hat most looks like it's going to intersect with my hand. I think it's somewhere in there. So I'm gonna leave the cursor there just so I have a guideline. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on my timeline by hitting Alt and then dragging my fingers on my mouse pad where it looks like seamless, where it looks like, well, first of all, I'm, my opacity is too high. So we need it down to like 50 so we can see both. All right, so there's the hat, and they line up pretty good right there. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it right here. This seems like a good spot, and I can go ahead and raise my opacity back up. This is gonna help me when I'm actually like masking it out. And to mask, we're gonna head over to the color page. So hitting the color page here, and when you come into your color page, it's more than likely going to look like this. So when it looks like this, we're going to want to, in the middle here, bring up the window that says Windows. So we're going to bring up that window. And then over here, we're going to want our keys, so keyframes. And I'm all zoomed in because I'm messing with stuff here. But we do want to be zoomed in a little bit. So to make sure we have the right clip selected, we can bring up our clips up top right here, click clips, and then it brings them up down below our viewer. So we do have the right clip selected, so I'm just gonna get rid of that so we have a better screen. From here, you can do this two ways. You can add an alpha output now, or you can add an alpha output after you've started keying it. I'm gonna add it now, because I think it's gonna help me see what I'm keying. So add an alpha output, I'm gonna bring my node blue into my alpha output by dragging a little dotted line from the blue on the node over to the alpha output. Then we can do a few different masks. So you could do the linear mask here, which is what we're gonna do. You could do a, a circle mask. Don't have them both selected. Things can get weird. So only pick one or the other. So we're gonna, right now, because I'm at the location where the, the hat meets, I'm going to go ahead and hit keyframe over on the right hand side and we're just going to go ahead and key it and then I'm just going to move this a little bit. So now that those are selected, you do have to adjust it so that it actually makes a key. So now you see behind the cursor here on the right hand side, there's two keys that showed up. All right, so I'm going to size it and change that because I want it to be the size that makes sense. So I'm just dragging my corners and you can soften your mask by dragging the red on the mask out or a window, but it's a mask. So if you click the red circles and you can drag them to soften it up, but we're not going to do that right now. I'm just trying to create some keyframes and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to move it because I don't want to block the hat that I threw until it meets up. And every time I move it, it's creating a keyframe. As soon as I catch it, we've got it covered. Now what I don't want to happen is as I move forward here, see the other hat flying past? We don't want that to hit. So pretty much before that hat goes past the screen, I need to be adjusting some stuff. And first of all, I need that there. Then we're gonna go forward a little bit. I just don't want it to be too abrupt when it fills the whole screen. So we're gonna, I'm gonna zoom out. And then I'm going to drag all the corners so that it just encompasses the whole screen. You can see I'm to the outsides of all the edges on the clip. Let's go back to our edit page so we can see what we've got here. And on our edit page, we'll play through it and just see how it looks. Oh, that looks pretty good. All right, so first try, we got it pretty decent. So saying we're good here and you can finesse yours however you'd like, we need to add the fun shake that I added in my original one. So we're going to go up to the left-hand side, the left top, hit effects. I'm gonna hit effects up here and adjustment clip. We want an adjustment clip above our other clips. And I'm gonna go ahead and just extend it all the way. And I want the peak of my effect to be when he catches when I catch the hat. We're gonna go like here 
and I want to go to open effects and then I need to drag a camera shake. It's down here at the bottom. Camera shake in, but we don't want the camera shake the whole time. So on the top right in our inspector, we're gonna hit effects with the adjustment clip selected. And I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe this motion scale where it is. And then I'm gonna go back a clip or two, zero this down to keyframe it to zero. That gives me a keyframe at zero. So anything before this will have no motion blur. And then after, or I'm sorry, motion shake. After that, it gets motion shake. Boom. And then I want to probably keyframe it somewhere around here at the same motion shake that it's having. Go a few frames forward to where I'd like it to stop and go ahead and motion scale it down. And if I did it right, it should look pretty good, like it has some abrupt shake when it catch it, boom. And you can adjust all these fun functions inside of the camera shake and make it however your shake is. And after that, you just go into the deliver page and deliver it wherever location you want and go ahead and send it to your phone to be able to upload to your social media. Unless you have your media accounts linked to your computer, then you can upload from there. If you think that was helpful and you're planning on making your own loop video, please hit that like button and give me a comment and ask any questions you want. And I'll try to answer them as fast as I can because I always try to get back in my comments. And until next time, check out all my PowerDirector tutorials because I've got a lot of fun tricks and tips on there. And it's my favorite phone video editor used by far. So. I'll see you guys next time. Go shoot something awesome. I hope to see your guys' loop videos out there. Peace out. Later.